When doing a spindle bearing job, a few preliminary steps are necessary before the real work can begin. First, index the spindle you want to remove into the second position. Then install a lock on the main electrical panel box disconnect. Push the start button to make sure the machine will not start. Remove the spool guards on the front side of the machine. Remove the bar stock, pusher tube assembly, and collet tube assembly. Remove any tool holders in the second position, both end tool slide and cross slide. You may also wish to clean the finger holder and spindle gear area with solvent prior to beginning the disassembly process. Now it is time to remove the finger holder assembly. You may need to remove two finger holder assemblies so that you have enough room to get the center gear off. Or at least enough room to get the inside bolt out of the rear retainer. Make sure to check where the retaining bolts set into the spindle to see if the finger holder has spun on the spindle. This will leave a groove all or part of the way around the spindle and weaken it. Disassemble the finger holder assemblies. Inspect the finger holder spool for evidence of finger contact wear. If the cams are worn badly, the finger holder will pop open when you run out of bar stock and hang up on the chucking shoe. If excessive wear is seen, you can correct it by remilling the keyway on the finger holder body. This will permit the fingers to ride on fresh finger holder spool material. Inspect the cams, fingers, and pins. After inspecting the fingers for obvious wear, Place the three fingers together on a common pin to check that the contact surfaces are parallel. Replace the fingers and pins. You may need to kiss grind the thrust plate to remove the wear grooves from where the fingers ride. Prior to installing the finger pin set screws, you may want to coat the set screws with Loctite. This will prevent the screws from backing off during production. Remove the split nut from the spindle inside the headstock. Remove the bolts from the front of the retainer. To remove the spindle, it is best to have a knockout plug made of aluminum or brass which will fit inside the spindle and butt up against the end of the spindle. But if you do not have an aluminum or brass knockout plug, you could get by holding a wooden 2x4 in back of the spindle. Then use a piece of bar stock, preferably hex as it slides more easily through the stock reel tube, to knock the spindle out. This helps to prevent the peening of the end of the spindle which would make it much more difficult to put the finger holder back on the spindle. When you remove the spindle, you may need to catch the inside sleeve.
Now remove the cotter pin, the nut, and the spindle gear from the end of the spindle drive shaft. Remove the bolts from the rear retainer and pop the retainer and bearing out. Inspect the rear bearing, the flinger, and the retainer. For removing the bearing races, I made an 18 inch long punch from 5 8 hex steel bar stock tapered on one end to ensure the proper angle for tapping out the bearings. Be careful not to jam the race by hitting on the same side every time. If the race stops moving, switch to hitting the race directly across from where you were hitting it before. Then inspect the bearing bores to make sure the races have not spun in them. If they are worn, you may need to take your carrier out and send it to a rebuilder to have the bores corrected. Slide your hot flinger on the spindle. You should have a heavy bushing which will fit over the spindle. The bushing is important in case the flinger or bearing does not drop all the way down.